Aloha, everybody, and welcome back to part three of Crash Twin Sanity. In the last part, Dr. Cortex got chased by bees, and then he almost proceeded to run into bear traps, plant creatures, nitro boxes, spikes. Then he got a beehive stuck on his head, and then a bear chased him. <laughs> and uh, now he's been captured by one of the first bosses you ever encountered in the original Crash Bandicoot, Papu Papu who has taken him to his tribe's village, where he is protected by a lot of tribal people. And uh, we're going to have to go into that territory to rescue Cortex, because, you know, we totally need his help. And it would be a shame if something bad happened to him. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, folks, I have to crouch behind these reeds, because we kind of have a stealth section going on now. See, there's all these watchtowers scattered throughout this area, and there's some tribal people with binoculars, and if they see Crash, they will signal all of the tribe's people on the side of this river, and they will throw a whole bunch of spears at you, and it doesn't matter how many Aku Aku masks you have in your possession, that is an instant kill. So, all you're really doing is, you're crouching behind the reeds, you're crouching uh, on the dock and stuff, and you're just sort of waiting for him to look out with his binoculars. Look out for a bit, look out for a bit, look out. And then he puts the binoculars away. And that's when you start move, making the move and going and doing your thing. Uh, it's more just a stop and go kind of situation than it is a real stealth system. I mean, we're not sneaking up behind people. We're not trying to dodge the line of sight of everyone in the area. If the boat guy sees us, it's okay. <laughs> If the boat guy sees us, he's not going to signal. He's not going to freak anybody out. We're just going to spin into him and kill him, and that's all there is to it. The game does a good job with its tutorial messages, which I can't turn off. Uh, in, the, in the options menu, you have stuff for, like, volume, sound effects, like, to change the audio there. You have the ability to turn on and off rumble. Uh, but we don't have the ability to turn off tutorial hints. There are no subtitles for the game, unfortunately, so if you're having a little bit of trouble understanding what the characters are saying, which I'm not really, I think the voices are pretty clear and articulate, and they definitely mute the music anytime a cutscene happens, so it's pretty clear to hear what they're saying. I mean, this isn't Sonic Adventure 2 levels of audio mixing. <laughs> I mean, it was a different time. <laughs> it was four years before this game, but, um... Uh, yeah, the tribal people, they like to run at you with their spears out, and that makes running in and spinning into them a little bit tricky. So what you want to do is you want to slide into them, or you want to jump so high that you hit the top of their head, and then you spin into them. Or you can even just like wait for them to swing at you, completely miss, and then go around them and spin into them. Again, the combat's a little different because we're not going down one singular track like every other Crash Bandicoot game. There's sort of a circling around people kind of thing going on. Woo! Second try! Yeah! You have to skip rocks across the ocean to hit the nitro boxes so that these boxes will spawn and that the, the gem will be exposed so I can collect it. But then you also have to bounce between these boxes to get to the small little island and Crash Bandicoot cannot swim, unfortunately. Even though there were scuba levels in Crash Bandicoot 3, uh, you know, if you remember the river levels of Crash 1, Crash 2, as soon as he falls in there, well, he just sort of floats, and then I guess he dies, but I don't know. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot cannot swim, so do not uh, find yourself falling into the water. Don't try taking a, a swim. Don't try taking a plunge in the pool, let's say. But uh, now we're in the center of the village, and I love the piece of music that happens in this area. I'm sorry for being silent, but seriously, <laughs> I love the soundtrack in Crash to Insanity. This uh, acapella version of the classical music track, Blue Danube, I hope I'm saying that right, but uh, 
Oh, it's so good. There's no music like this in, in the other Crash games. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like a lot of the music in the original trilogy, the Naughty Dog trilogy. But uh, this is easily my favorite soundtrack of all the Crash games. There's just something really whimsical and special about it. And I was always thinking about it long after I played the game for the first time. <laughs> But uh, there's two gems in the village, one where I just picked it up, and there's another one on top of the huts. You have to wait for the flaps to open up in order to start hopping between huts, which means I gotta just sit here and wait for them right now, because they go very slowly one way, and then they go very slowly the other way. Now Cortex is tied up, there's a crystal above his head, you can't really jump up to him, so we need to manipulate all of the worms we saw in part one, in order to get to where Cortex is so that we can bounce off the worms to get to him. And so that means we're going to be chasing one singular worm throughout this entire area. So like you slam him, and then you follow the dirt trail, you follow the dirt path, and then just go to where he ends up, slam him again, follow him some more. If he goes across the river, then you're going to have to use these planks of wood on the side to get across, because again, Crash can't swim. He will die. Be careful. I made the right call sliding into that guy, because I was considering, like, oh, I got an Aku Aku mask. I should be invulnerable. I should be able to just spin into him, no problem. But then I was like, how much time was it since the last time I picked it up? Uh, I'll just slide into him. <laughs> you know. I wasn't really following the dirt trail uh, with this particular moment, but I knew he was going to end up here because I've played this before. But uh, it can be easy to lose track of the worm, and if you do take too long, the worm will go back to the place it was originally. So you do have to hurry up a little bit, but just pay attention to where the dirt trail goes and uh, bounce that crystal. Okay, they're pissed. Now the tribal people are going to chase you, and they are instant kill, and that means we got ourselves a traditional Crash Bandicoot run towards the camera chase scene, like we saw in all the Naughty Dog original games, as well as Wrath of Cortex, but uh, that means we're running towards the camera, we have to react really quickly to logs and uh, bottomless pits and stuff, because if we fall in, well then we die, but we can't really stop moving, because these guys are chasing us, and they can kill us, and uh... That's no good! So just keep running, watch the obstacles, make sure to jump when you can. And as you saw, um, the minute you come up to the first log, jump off the log in order to find one of the gems. Because there is a gem in this pathway, and if you don't grab it now, well, you won't grab it later. But, booyah! I got all six of the gems for Totem Hokum this particular area. Booyah! There's going to be some more traditional run towards the camera because something's chasing you moments in this game, don't worry. Again, despite the open world, like, wide area exploration aspect to this whole game, it still feels like a Crash Bandicoot game at the end of the day. Nothing's too drastically different. This isn't like Crash of the Titans or Mind Over Mutant where they make you take over giant beasts and now you're punching people and building up a combo meter and, you know... It turns into every generic kid's platformer that every American video game developer made during the PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube era. And then Sonic did in 2014 with Rise of Lyric, but, uh... And there's Cortex. He's, uh, talking to somebody. Oh, Crash. The farmer's market is tomorrow, and my wumpa trees won't grow! For my orchard is riddled with greedy worms. If you rid my land of these pests, I'll give you this power crystal. I'm an evil scientist. What do you expect? This isn't a game. <laughs> oh my god. Cortex, you murdered this bastard. Jesus Christ. Well, actually, he's twitching, sort of like Coco did in the first cutscene, so I'm sure he just paralyzed him. He's not dead, kids. This game's rated E for everyone. He didn't just murder him. <laughs> Still, I like that, because, you know, 
Usually in video games, especially something like Jack and Daxter, someone will give you a quest so you can get the little MacGuffin that you need to get through the game, and this game's just like, no. <laughs> We're not doing your stupid quest, although, now as you watch, yes we are doing the quest, because I still have to kill the worms anyway. And then Cortex warms up, warps off, because I need these trees to get to the next area, but, uh... <laughs> we still end up doing the quest anyway, but I like the idea that because we're playing as Cortex, one of the big villains of the series, the big villain of the series, really, uh, no, he's not playing ball. He's just going to shoot you and take the crystal. <laughs> I tell you, you boys have been doing swell. Just swell! Anyhow, we've been taking in the sights of Insanity Island here. Nice digs. So much to see, so much to destroy. You got the native village, the lava caves, the totem gods. Yeah, back in the 10th dimension, we don't have anything near as nice as the totem gods. The vivid colors, the intricate carving, you know, it's almost as if they're alive. <laughs> yeah. Almost exactly as if they're alive. I will say one failing of Crash Twin Sanity is that the sound design, even though I did compliment how it was mixed well, it does have a lack of sound effects going on with a lot of the cutscenes, where like this big giant rock golem's coming out and you think there'd be more pounding and, and crashing sound effects, but uh, the one thing I know about Crash Twin Sanity is that this game was certainly rushed. The game will actually make jokes about it being rushed later down the road, but uh, there was a lot of things they wanted to implement, a lot of things they wanted to put into this game that they just didn't really have time to. Uh, and I think a lot of people think the ending's a little bit underwhelming. I don't think it's that underwhelming, honestly. I think it's pretty appropriate for the majority of the game, but, uh, you know. Anyway, we got ourselves a boss, but there's not much to this boss. And like I said, this is easier than the fight with Cortex at the very beginning of the game because... In order to dodge any of his slams, any of his hand slaps, any of his lasers, any of his whatever, just keep moving. Just keep moving left or right. Just keep moving. Keep walking. He doesn't try to shoot ahead of you. He doesn't try to slap ahead of you. He always just tries to slap or shoot lasers where you are. And if you just keep moving, well then you don't really have to worry about it. So what you do is you wait for him until he has to do this inhaling suck-up move. And then you throw Cortex into the mouth. <laughs> Again, Cortex is a prick. But we can treat him like a tool, you know. And uh, I guess he gets all choked up and his insides get all rattled because Cortex flies in there. After he swallows um, Cortex, he usually sends out all of these little stone henchmen to come at Crash. They only take one spin to kill. And, uh, you know, it's nothing you can't worry about. And that's it! Just three hits and the stone golem guy is down. Done like dinner. And, uh, that's our second boss. That was way easier than Cortex and Engine, let me tell you. Aw, oh, nuts! He has nuts? Well, you gave it your best shot. But even now, our vice versa reverse device is in operation, sucking the goodness out of this dimension and leaving behind the worst of all possible worlds. We just like making a mess. <laughs> See you around, losers! <laughs> Say, is it lunchtime yet? Tenth Dimension. Yes, yes! In the dark ocean of my intellect swims a magnificent whale of a plan. To the laboratory! We're not beaten yet. The game is on! This way! Cortex, stop warping off without me. <laughs> Just because there's a lot of platforming segments where I don't need you, all of a sudden you know that. <laughs> But yeah, right in the distance, that is Cortex's Island, his ice laboratory, where he's been holding up for the last three years since the Wrath of Cortex. And we're going to be swimming to that place and checking that out in part four, but until then, we have one more gem to collect on Insanity Island. 
We hit these boxes, we hit this TNT, it's gonna take on the Nitro, which will cause a chain reaction, and booyah! We can pick up this gem right here. Yeah! So if I look, I have all the gems of Insanity Island, I have all the gems of the Cavern, I have all the gems of Totem Hokum, and uh, also the tutorial segment where Coco, Coco in quotations, was helping us across the jungle. So yeah, so far so good. I've got 24 gems already. And we're done with Insanity Island. This is our home, but uh, we gotta move on to a much cooler atmosphere. A much more icy and chilled environment, let's say. But, uh, yeah. All you have to do is hop onto the boat on at the end of this dock, and we'll be going to Cortex Island. There are a lot of extra lives scattered throughout the game, but uh, I'm just going for the gems... That's the only 100% completion I'm really going for. When it comes to, like, these miscellaneous extra lives that I would have to bust my ass with some really tough platforming in order to collect, I'm probably not going to get all of that. So, uh, besides, the life count maxes out at 99 anyway. <laughs> but anywho, folks, we're moving on to an icy Cortex Laboratory in Part 4. See you then.